people of science, take one. David, why did you choose Charles Darwin? He inspires me because he made sense out of the natural world. And not only just physical sense of why animals have antlers or why birds have fine feathers, but to suggest the mechanism which led to all these multiplicity of forms. And that's a huge change in the mindset. So Darwin is the founding father of really scientific zoology and botany. And it's interesting to look back on his early career and, and his motivations, really, or, or his inspiration. How, how did he get there? He was absolutely mad about collecting beetles. And when you do start collecting things, you say, well, this is one is different from that. But is it more different or less different from that? And that means you start building genealogies. That was the trigger which led him to these extraordinary thoughts. Yeah, it seems like one of the, the, a very pure expression of what it is to be a scientist, that it's actually understanding the natural world is all that matters. I am really entertained by a sentence that he wrote in one of his letters in which he says, every time I see a peacock's tail, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> and he feels sick because he can't understand how it could have been that individual bird putting all that energy into growing this vast and immense tail with this complex pattern and colours and one thing and another, how it could happen. And the thought that he couldn't understand it was what made him sick. But in the end, Darwin explained sexual selection. Back then, that's a bold statement. Was he a, a bold character in that sense? He was intellectually bold in himself but he wasn't aggressive uh, because I think he knew that the majority of the society would find it d deeply blasphemous to suggest that uh, we were descended from simian ancestors. The more you know about Darwin, the more you realize that he was enormously considerate. I mean, he had these strong, steely convictions, but he was gentle with people. He was a courteous, kind human being. He was an extraordinary man. That's a marvellous portrait of him, isn't it, in his old age? This is 1868. Yeah. And there, there's his beagle. What was the route that they took? Well, they were, they were commissioned to go down to the farthest tip of South America and do a survey around the Cape Horn. But then, of course, they decided to go home by crossing the Pacific. And so he then, on that way, calls upon the Galapagos, where in the moment of enlightenment strikes him, if one is to believe the story. What do you think would fascinate Darwin about the world today? Oh, undoubtedly, the discovery of genetics. The key that he really needed to have was the physical basis in which characteristics were handed from one generation to the other. And he postulated things he called gemules, which would do that sort of job. He had no idea what they were. Uh, but to the certain extent, you could say that he, as it were, predicted there would have to be a thing like that, which we now call chromosomes uh, with DNA, which carry DNA from one generation to the next. He's a wonderful writer as well, wasn't he? Absolutely, sir. I, I mean, that, this book, this is the first edition of The Origin of Species. And what is marvellous about it is that anybody can read any page and it makes absolute sense to them. It's not full of jargon, it's full of argument and observation. And that's another reason why I admire him so much. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one. And that, whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved.